What's going on guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're having a look at scrolling and also parallax to receive this kind of effect over here. I hope you guys enjoy. Today we're not gonna have the face camera because I'm quite sick and I'm a bit late. So um, yeah, we're gonna go from here. I hope you enjoyed the video and also if you do, please leave a like. Thank you so much. All right, so we've got another extremely fast video today. We're gonna be going through the whole process of creating the script um, very quickly and then we're gonna set up our scene. So I'll start with a empty scene, just like I have right now, and a couple of artwork I have right here. Simple stuff, very ugly, cloud one, um, tree one, and also tree two. So there's like three variation of things. We're gonna be creating a parallax layer with every single one of these. So what I'll start to do is creating myself a new script. I'll call this one um, scroll and parallax. So there is no real reason for me to put them together, however, um, I feel like it's gonna be a little bit more concise for this tutorial, so. You could have a, a script that does scrolling and a script that does parallax. Now, what I mean by scrolling is if you go like all the way um, towards the right and your camera moves with you, then you're expecting to see stuff that was on the left go on the right and it would just like keep on going like that infinitely. Parallax is just moving with the camera at a different speed. So having that out of the way, we'll start with references. I need a reference to my camera because if we have parallax and also for scrolling, we need to know where the camera is, know whether or not we have to scroll. I also grab a reference to the sprite, but I actually don't like that so much. Instead, what I'll do is I'll just add something like um, a sprite size. So the reason I was grabbing a reference before is I get the exact size of my sprite, but um, it would change, like if we have multiple type of sprites, like three, one and three, two, um, they might not be the same size. So here's what I'll do. I'll put that somewhere else instead. Um, so in the second section, I'll have something called tweaks. And under tweaks, we're going to be setting some of the parallax stuff, um, some of the scrolling stuff, and also a couple of Boolean to know whether or not we're using them. Let me just bump up this uh, sprite size over here. So parallax speed is gonna be, okay, at which pace do we follow the camera? If this is on the one, it's going to follow the, the camera properly. If it's on zero, well, basically means there is no parallax. And if it's above one, then it's gonna move faster. So if it's above one, you should have that locked on the front layer in front of your player in case you wanna do some kind of effect like that. Um, and if it's behind your player, you're expecting this to be in between zero and one. Okay, view zone, um, that's gonna be for tweaking. You're gonna see that when we scroll. Uh, sprite size, we already talked about that. And the rest is just whether or not are we using our small features in here. So those are booleans. All right, so heading over in the logic fields. The logic fields, I'll need a, an array of reference of all the children beneath me. So the setup is going to look like this. We're going to have the main object with this behavior. And then beneath it, all the children's will be scrollable or parallaxable, I guess that's not really a word. Um, but the children are gonna be the one that, that will be affected. So we need a list of those children and I do a transform array. We don't, um, well, they, we could technically have a dynamic list in case you're trying to add some at runtime, but I don't really see why you would do that right now. I don't really have the, the, the case um, in my head. And the rest is just for logic. So it's gonna be part of our algorithms. Okay, so let's get started with a couple of things in our start. Let's declare a private void start and we'll find the camera. Do note that you could, al you could also um, have a serialized field and just drag and drop the camera. I just go and grab the main one. Um, one problem, if your camera is not tagged as main camera, so if you go over here and you do not have main camera, the code I was writing did, would not work. So either go here, swap it to main camera or um, get it through another means. So you could do something, I believe you can do current. Yeah, that could also work but I'll, I'll use main because I always tag my camera as main camera. Now, right after that, we'll get the amount of child we have. So to do this, we can do a transform dot child count. And I just store that value inside of CC for child count. Right after this, we're going to fill our layer array by doing a for loop. So first we declare our array. We say, okay, it's gonna be that size, that size being the child, the child count. And then we'll go and we'll populate that array just like this. Also the voice, yes, I am sick today, but it's not gonna stop me from making videos. Next up, we have the background size, and this is how I was getting it before. So this is exactly how I was gonna go grab the first child and then, okay, so how much does it measure by getting a sprite render? Then I get that and we're gonna be scrolling using this. Um, but we, we change our mind as we're making this. Instead, I'm gonna be using the value I put under sprite size. 
Um, so it's going to be a manual value. Okay, so that being said, I'll skip this line and we'll fix our logic as time goes. Okay, now what we're going to do next is going to be for the future. We're going to set the left index to zero and the right index to the last children index. And finally, we'll type in some code that won't work right now, but we'll make sure to come back in the future. So I have a condition over here called place at start. What this is, is for lazy people like me that um, just want to throw all their sprites in the game, like on top of each other, don't want to place them at all. And then if they're not placed, well, if this is on, my script is going to place them directly in my scene. So this is basically for lazy people. <laughs> um, and what it does, it just goes in quickly and scroll everything towards the left and then back to the right. So we're all placed and all working. All right, now before I confuse you any further, what I'll do is I'll create my scroll left and also scroll um, right function. Those are basically the same. Um, let me go quickly through them and we'll explain. So what's happening right here in case we go in our game really quickly and we, we create a new object just like our setup is made to work. And I say this is going to be my tree layer, just like so. This one is going to contain our scroll and parallax. Um, and then on top of that, beneath, actually, beneath that, we'll drag and drop a couple of trees, like, oh, three, one is going to work. Um, three, two is going to work. Also, by the way, art is from Yume, because I don't know how to art. So she's uh, she's blessing us with some of the art. And here is what we're gonna have. So we're gonna have a couple of trees. And what's going to happen, they're going to look like this in the game. So one is not gonna be in the center. One's gonna be here, two is gonna be in the center. And it's gonna look something like this. Now, as we move towards the right, we are going to be looking for a position with the camera and say, okay, so are we far right enough? Like, are we around this point? Actually, this point. If we're around this point, we need to do a scroll right. Now, the operation that's going to happen when we do a scroll right, it's going to take the tree, the first tree, and it will move it towards that direction. I just realized my camera is backward, guys. That's why I did that like this there. That makes more sense. And as we move towards this, if we reach a certain point, we scroll right again. So it's gonna do, it's gonna take this tree and put it over here. And we won't see the difference in the game, so we won't see it popping. And that's our goal. If we do a scroll left, it's the same thing, but we go in the other direction, so that direction, and then this one comes back like it was always there and it never really moved. So that is our scroll right and also scroll left. Now background size, that's not what we'll be using. We're using the, um, the sprite size in this case. And I kind of want to put the default, else I forget about it. Let's say default 10. Oh, 10 is actually quite a lot. Default 1. And so the logic, um, the logic is basically what I've just explained right now in this scene. I don't want to take you through that. You can read it. Uh, we move, we then swap the index, and we reset our index if we go a little bit too far. And that's for, that's for scroll left. Now scroll right, exact same thing. You just swap a couple of values um, like so. So instead of being a minus, it's actually a plus over here. And then we invert the right index with the left index. We do a plus plus instead. And instead of checking if it's smaller than zero, we check if we reach the end of our array. So that is scroll left and also scroll right. If we just have a quick look at this in the game, and I'm going to take all my trees and stack them up together. So over here we enable place at start and let's put the sprite size on say two. I don't know how big this one is, but let's try two. Okay, so we get something like that. Um, two is definitely a little bit too small. We can try six and it will lay them down like so. Isn't that pretty? Okay, that's a start. Now, what's really important is to make sure we do that automatically. And to do so, we're going to need a update loop, of course. So let's go ahead and declare ourselves a update loop, just like so. And we're going to start with which one? Hmm. Let's start with parallax. We're going to check for parallax first. So if we are using parallax, we're going to take the delta in between where our camera is in X and also where it was on the last frame. This is going to let us know how much our camera has moved this frame. Now, uh, in fact, maybe we should use late update. We'll come back to it if it doesn't feel right. Um, transform the position. This is ourselves. So this is like the whole object that contains all the children. Um, then we move that by, of course, the R speed and also the Delta X. That being said, we then set the last camera X. 
And let's go again, try that out in the game really quickly. Oh, actually, we have nothing to try it out, huh? We're going to move our camera manually through here. So here, we'll put that there, move our camera and see what happens. Okay, so you're going to have to look through this scene to see it. If we put the grid down, it moves slightly with you, which is great. Um, you can also modify the speed, so it's going to match your speed 100% if you put it on one. So now if I move my camera, they move with me. If I go a little bit um, slower than that, say 0 0.25, actually 75, you're going to see it move, but it is going to go and fall back in time. Okay, so that was Parallax. Parallax is extremely easy. However, scrolling is something different, and here is the function. We're going to be looking with our current position.x if we are smaller than the last, or actually the most left um, sprite, plus a certain field that we're going to have to adjust depending on how big our sprite is. Same thing for the right hand side. And just like this, our script should be completed. Now we're going to go ahead and try this out. It's going to be, it's going to be messy. It's going to depend on um, a couple of factors. The, the main one being your sprite. So how big is your sprite? And look at us. As I'm moving left and right, they do translate just like this. Now, um, of course, if you're going to have that small of a sprite and you're going to have only three, you're going to see that popping left and right. However, if I go here, I duplicate all of them now and I have um, six threes total. You, know, you can do a slight rotation on them. You can play around with it a um, couple of tweaks so it doesn't look so bland and boring. Here is what you will end up with. Okay, so it looks a little bit better on this end. Um, at the beginning, you see there's like a gap over here. That's because our view, our view is a little bit too bad. So let's do view zone of 10. Now you can see that it has been moved around it. Or five could work as well. And if I scroll, not my trees, but my camera, do we see any popping right now? Yep, we do. So we can play around with the view zone again. 10 was fine, most likely. And you see now, there is not going to be any difference. You won't see it in the game at all. If we're looking only on the left, oh, sorry, the right hand side, it works forever. And you can go, you, you can't go that fast because it has to go through the array. So if you go that fast, it's eventually going to catch up, but you'll see that, you know, it's uh, it's kind of buggy. It's actually quite funny. Um, but yeah, they do move like this. Now, the beauty of this is in the setup. So there's going to be a lot of scene work to be done. So let me show you this example right here that I've done earlier. Um, I have all my grass. My grass is over here. That's basically the floor. You see the floor is not technically supposed to move and it could be on a different layer. It doesn't even have to use the system. However, I decided that it would um, and my parallax speed would be zero. So it's not following with me. Technically, I wouldn't have to do parallax. Um, it is scrolling. However, that's the only thing I needed is scrolling. And if we press on play now, we have something like this. Okay. Now, how do we make this look Oh, a little bit better? First, we fix our, our view for the floor. So we're going to go ahead, put a view zone a little bit higher. Seven will work. No, now I'm missing one sprite. Uh, maybe six if we're lucky. Yeah. Okay. So in case I didn't find the right value, just like I've done right now, of course, I could have just spun a new sprite and have something else rotating with me. But you see, it's really clutch right now, um, but it works. Okay, so this effect, I like it. Why? Simply because we have different speed on different layer. If you were to take another layer of trees over there and you'd put them on something even slower than that, say 0 0.1, you see there's like a nice little blend that goes on. Let's make sure they are in between the other one. It is quite cool. And you can keep your logic working great with the floor because the floor moves at the same speed as your camera. Of course, you can do that. So that's really it. We got something that looked quite nice. Um, the script is fairly easy, but uh, like I said, the biggest thing you're gonna have to do is set up your scene so it works. So play with those values, play with the parallax, play with the view zone, and decide whether or not you wanna actually place them manually or you wanna have them place at start. Also do know that you don't really have to um, always scroll if you don't want to. What we can do is like, say, take the clouds and say at one point there's, there's no longer going to be clouds. So here's what I'll do. I won't place them. Actually, I will place them at start, but I don't want scrolling. 
So what this will end up doing is this. So we have clouds over here and they work with parallax, but at one point we won't have any of them. It's gonna take a little bit of time though, so let me reduce that. <laughs> and there you go, so now we have clouds, now we have clouds, but at one point later in our scene, the sky get clears and uh, yeah, it looks something like that. Okay, that's actually where I'm gonna be ending today's episode. As I mentioned, I won't show my face today, I'm quite sick and also um, it's much faster to do it like that and today I'm a bit late on the video, so thanks for checking out Patreon. Also, thanks for looking at the description down below if you need servicing done. Uh, email is down below, we can help you out. And that's it.